बहुत ही संक्षिप्त में मैं उनका परिचय दे रहा हूँ बहुत लंबा मैं उनका कार्य है मैं उनका लाइफ लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट अवार्ड है फॉर कंट्रीब्यूशन टू कम्बेट ह्यूमन ट्रैफिकिंग इन इंडिया बाय द यूएस काउंसिल ऑफ जनरल इससे मैं उनको लाइफ टाइम अचीवमेंट अवार्ड प्राप्त हुआ है ऐसे हमारे बीच जो आज वक्ता के रूप में मैम है मैं मैम का बहुत ही आदर के साथ स्वागत करता हूं ब्राउज पल्लर की तरफ से आज के कार्यक्रम की अध्यक्षता आईटीएसी सेल के चेयरमैन और हमारे विश्वविद्यालय के डीन प्रोफेसर डी के वर्मा सर कर रहे हैं मैं सर का स्वागत करता हूं इस कार्यक्रम में हमारे विश्वविद्यालय की ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर मैडम प्रोफेसर आशा शुक्ला मैम जुड़ गई हैं मैं मैम का भी बहुत ही स्वागत करता हूँ इस कार्यक्रम में प्रोफेसर किशोर जॉन सर हैं श्री भरत भाटी जी विशाल पुरोहित जी और डॉक्टर मनीषा सक्सेना मैम सहित हमारे साथ जितने भी देश के अलग अलग हिस्सों से जुड़े हुए लोग हैं पार्टिसिपेंट हैं मैं सभी का बहुत ही स्वागत करता हूं अब आगे के लिए मैं डॉक्टर रश्मि जैन से मंच निवेदन करता हूं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मनोज जी निश्चित रूप से महाविद्यालय परिवार अत्यंत ही गौरवान्वित है डॉक्टर बाला सुब्रमण्यम जैसी महान शिक्षाविद अनुभवी प्रशासनिक अनुभव वाली अब मैं मैडम से अनुरोध करूंगी कि आज के इस स्पेशल लेक्चर में जेंडर बायस एंड स्टीरियो पर अपने उद्बोधन से हम सभी को अभिभूत करें डॉक्टर बाला सुब्रमण्यम थैंक यू मैम I am really grateful to Professor Shukla for having invited me to this special lecture. Uh, this this is what I call an immersion theory. So many classes are being held around the year, but when you immerse everybody into a one month session on gender, then there is a greater chance that people are going to internalize. whatever we say because one subject and a very focused attention is being given so this i think in the long run very will be very helpful uh i start today session uh can you go to the first slide now basically i i i'm going to start with with my presentation on differences between sex and gender i think many of you may be aware of it any of you may be familiar with it but let me just to set the stage for talking about an issue like gender bias and gender stereotypes these issues have either got to be set forth for people who are not familiar or we'll have to set a stage for people to get to put gender stereotype and then gender bias into this framework of our understanding of sex and gender for sex is biological as the as the uh, presentation says it is you know when you when you it's a biological it's also a physiological reference now the moment you say that there must there is going to be procreation then it's like a production for production you need factors of production which is you know you say you'll give machine you'll give equipments you'll give labor now to procreate nature said that ordained that certain aids and equipments will be given with the help of which procreation would be possible now nature also ordained that this will be a joint venture between men and women and therefore the organs of reproduction are arranged in such a way that men and women together the important idea here is in partnership will be able to produce so this is creation procreation production reproduction so this is how we are understanding prajanan prajanan is reproduction now the basic so all the vocabulary you have uterus you have clitoris you have penis you have testicles you have all these are of puberty menopause all these are vocabulary which are arranged around the one common goal of reproduction for which two sexes are required the male and the female sex now therefore the differences are the, the, the when you say sex then the male female difference are very very limited and very countable 
when you move to gender that is something that we call a social construct this is puranic aitihasik samajik whatever you say it is something that is laid down laid down and therefore it is banavati as against sex sex is natural and this is samajik this is samajik ling and that's prakritik ling so samajik ling will tell girls are not supposed to go at night out at night boys should do this girls should do this so what they should do should not do must do must not do able to do not able to do all these are designed by society and it's coming from generation now when we said sex is nature made which means say nature does not discriminate female is equal to male there is equality complete equality the organs may be more or less that's a different issue but then there's complete equality but how we have may understood this sex in terms of gender we have, you can have a society where female is equal to male you can have a society where female is the dominant gender or you can have a society where the male is the dominant gender now we have had times where we were equal uh, uh, f is equal to m which is f is female and m is male we also had times where the male female was dominant and that was used to be called a matriarchal society excuse me ma'am you know first slide i'm still on the first slide you got it okay ma'am yes ma'am yeah. got it okay yeah. so Sorry. you have a society with where the male is dominant and therefore you have three types now we normally understand that in our society we have exceptions like kerala and tamil and uh, meghalaya which are matriarchal societies where the female holds a dominant role this is a myth there is no country today in the world where you can call there is a where, where you can say the matriarchal society exists now how we how we arrive at this we have something called matri local patri local matri lineal patri lineal matri archi patri archi now when you say matri local what we mean by that is when a woman gets married the male comes to stay in the house of the female in patri local it's the exact reverse in matrilineal the property is inherited through the female child in a patri local the property is inherited through the male child now just having these two features in any society will not decide whether it is matriarchal or patriarchal what will decide is who takes decisions household decisions decisions in the public arena say religion who are the people are holding the, who are which are these are the sites of patriarchy religion you have the priests you dominated the judiciary is dominated by judges so every sector if you look the decision making in the public arena is held by males and that is why we call our societies patriarchal societies now these societies when they were made the foundation of the the foundation of patriarchy was given which is invisible now but that sustains that society based on pitrasattvatmak siddhant now naturally nature is constant the sex is constant wherever you go it's universal there's not much uh, there's no difference we are not talking about transgenders at this point in time it is not within the scope of the discussion but when we say variable we mean that gender varies over time place family society country class caste urban rural now many of you would say that i bring up my child equally boys and girls are equal in my family but that doesn't guarantee that your daughter for example of the two chi whether it's a boy or a girl that your daughter will be treated in the same way that you have treated her at home in society there is no control so this is a dacha 
it doesn't mean that if one family is giving equal respect to boys and girls or equal based on an equal opportunities for both boys and girls to grow equally it doesn't mean the society will give them see them with the same values in fact maybe otherwise it may be a harmful way of looking at the girl child so we'll have to understand that i am living in the in a city okay these things don't they, we are all equal here in the city urban urban societies are fairly equal now the difference may be in degree the difference may be in degree but there's difference in kind the point is no society in the whole world as of now there may be varying degrees of equality but there's no society which you can say which is not which is gender equal so all societies are now the best part about this kind of an understanding is that if one family can change everybody else can change so when we say variable for example the tribal communities don't have dowry other communities have dowry now have corona having come in many of those bashes birthday bashes and wedding bashes we had it stopped in fact some many many areas even dowry has stopped corona has changed all gender roles who will do what who will work from home who will work not work from home so the best part about understanding gender as a variable is that it is changeable and it is within our hands to change now having said this let me run through the next 10 6 uh, 10 or 11 slides which will show will show the whole idea through some pictures may i ask bharat to run through those slides give a second for each till slide 18 come to slide 18 ma'am agar network problem hai okay. Uh, okay but kuldeep has long hair some people say those who wear jewelry are girls some people say that boys are those who wear shorts and climb trees some shanti wears shorts and can can climb trees very quickly and she's a girl some people say that boys are those okay yes one safida and nafisa carry two pitchers of water and heavy loads of fuel wood but they are girls some people say that girls are those who help in housework but joseph helps with cooking and cleaning at home and he is a he is a boy baljeet and her mother work in the fields and they are women some people say that those who are gentle are motherly are girls Kabir is gentle, full of motherly love, and he looks after his younger sister. And he is a boy. Aruna is a district collector and manages the entire district, and she is a woman. Then, what is a boy? What is a girl? These gender differences have been created by nature. I am just trying to sum up the first part by saying this: a nature produces males, females at birth. There is no way that you can distinguish. a boy child from a male child from a girl child at birth except through the genitalia they grow into boys they grow into boyhood and the girls grow into girlhood then you have men women feminine masculine and these are some of the stereotypes of traits of women and men which come into being now the important part is that if a girl uh, starts playing with a kite or uh, going up the trees she is called boisterous so she is described in terms of what a boy is expected to be and a man who walks like a woman is called effeminate because he is not he is he is walking as if a woman would walk so these are some of the transposed transposed qualities or traits between men and women now the most important part here is that this is the self the, the woman for the woman that could be the self image also and for the man that could be the self image also so what 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 constitutes gender stereotyping is how a woman sees herself which is her self image and how a man sees himself as a self image how a man how a man or men see woman and men women and how a woman and women see man and men all these four constitute gender and gender stereotyping this is fundamental to the understanding of gender stereotyping 
it's both at the individual level and also at the so social so, so societal level and all four contribute to gender stereotyping now the next concept that we need to understand before we move further is sexual division of labor this is a nature's way of assigning roles and responsibilities man inseminates women reproduce we've talked about that gender division of labor arises from social construct of what a man or woman should do which we mentioned it is assigned not based on merit but based purely on gender now what are the three categories which form the basis of either sexual or gender based division of labor because when we say gender sexual division of labor is also part of it it's rolled into one so when it's productive those are services which can be bought sold or exchanged in the market what is done at home and what is not what is consumed at home for household consumption or produced at subsistence level will be not be called productive therefore those who are working at home and not entering into the market they don't get any value in society in terms of income earning investment etc etc so you have a very clear cut division in terms of gender there's a gender divide in production itself that those who produce in the market are those who are productive and those who produce at home for household purpose at subsistence level without going into the market are those who are not called productive so they become invisible in the labor force they become invisible in counting the national income therefore there is a clear a divide between the public place and private domain when you describe production what is reproduction there are two kinds of reproduction one is the sexual division of labor which we told told um, talked about which is involved in reproduction and which involves a joint partnership of road of men and women but what is social reproduction or sociological reproduction this is where women in our society being a patriarchal society we are talking entirely in the context of patriarchy where the female gender is maintaining productive roles of men in addition to doing their own roles suppose you have come to this meeting your wife had to prepare the lunch she had to play the table she had to get your clothes ready she had to button up the bar, stitch the buttons if that was required no this is called maintaining because you are seen as a provider as a bread earner and therefore you get importance you you move out and therefore there should be somebody who is managing the home also sociological reproduction means not only for that the woman is reproducing every earning member of the family since she is a raised begetter she covers she takes care of means she creates procreates not creates procreates maintains sustains both genders this is sociological reproduction now community work pertains to unpaid activities necessary for community cohesion marriages and funerals which is shared by the two but in, it depends on what degree of sharing is there among couples in different situations or families now i am going to i did i'm sorry i have to blast you with this uh, there's no intention to blast you with this title but the title of this research itself is called gender stereotype in higher education and it delineates the perception of participants they were all pg students about 300 of them and there was a semi structured questionnaire in a research study of vidya sagar university among pg students now being a university you are all very closely allied with research this is your your bread and butter but some it may be the breath very breath itself and therefore there's far more credibility to a research study which is presented before a searching group like you and that too it was published in an international journal of research studies in education 2013 volume 2 number 1 75 to 90 now most of these uh, most of these participants in the research would by the be uh, teaching or doing further research or whatever but i want that i'm going to show this each of these slides 
for about 30 seconds or so, I want that we read it in silence uh, to ourselves and I will move on. There'll be the next five slides will be just reading. I do not want to button because it will disturb internalization or reception of the idea. Study with the judiciary, you'll get very much the same perceptions. You went to the police, you would get very much the same perception. This is why we've been constantly reiterating or reinforcing the point that gender stereotypes layers every society top to bottom, irrespective of the sector in which we are working. Now, therefore, I'm going to make a set of uh, 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 statements now, but, but the important point is that this is a research which has been published in an international journal and accepted to be scientific, objective, quantifiable, measurable, credible, etc., etc. So we give importance to this kind of a, a research which has brought out the, what we said, the self-image of men and women as individuals and the image that men have of women and women have of men, all of which is in stereotypical framework, generalizations of the social group of women and men. This is the point that the study is bringing out. And we don't have to worry that I, 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 I thought it was very apt for, uh, this, uh, for uh, addressing an institution, this, the, uh, the university, which is in uh, higher education. But I think this is across the board. So, but I wanted to bring this to you because you will relate to research. A judge might not accept this as evidence, but a research institution which values research will value the research findings of this study. Now, having said this, let me move across to say, make certain general sta certain statements, not general statements, certain statements. These could be either in the form of something which has occurred, which is commonly spoken, it's a preconceived notions. They are just statements which are made randomly. And these reveal the mindsets of men and women in society. And this, this is the basis or this constitutes stereotyping. When we say women breastfeed and men can only bottle feed, it is a clear case of when I put S and G, it means sex or gender. Now, this is a statement of sex. Women breastfeed and men can only bottle feed. I mean, they cannot, uh, go, they, they, that is not what, it is nature ordained. This is part, one part is part of, this is part of Prakritik Ling, but this has been divided in this way. Nature itself has given this division. But when we say men are breadwinners, providers, and the next one is women's ideal workspace is from home, and then the fourth statement, uh, yes, these two statements. I'm going to take these two statements and say what it means in terms of gender stereotyping. When you say men are breadwinners and providers, then this means that men have no choice to be non-breadwinners or non-providers. If a man is not working, it's a matter of stigma, it's a matter of concern, it's a matter of great regret. And for a man himself, it may be a matter of guilt. And we mean that he may not be respected or that he may be feeling rejected. But therefore, gender stereotyping is typically harmful for both men and women. And in this case, men, because it takes out from him the choice of doing what he wants without having to be a provider or a breadwinner, number one, which is probably acceptable within the family or not acceptable. That's a different issue. So it's generally not acceptable. So the choice gets restricted. Now, he could be the, the, he could be the main breadwinner. He could be the sole breadwinner or he could be among other breadwinners, primary, secondary, etc., etc. Now, this choice not being available to men is a matter of great concern. If he wants to be an artist and not get monthly incomes and get income when it is sold, no family is going to wait for him to do all that. So, therefore, there is 
this kind of stereotyping actually traps both men and women by not allowing them to exercise choices or opportunities or dreams that come to them which they want to pursue to do what they want to do for their own fulfillment now the other side of the coin is women's ideal space space is home now when you say that man is the provider automatically there is a relegation to the background of the other one because somebody has to take care of home and therefore it's always been held that the ideal space for women is to work, work work from home now the whole concept of work from home has changed with corona we were demanding women were demanding flexibility now who has been given flexibility without demand is a man because they say you work from home because they were more often into telecommutable jobs and now besides working they are also becoming caregivers at home by virtue of working from home now this is very interesting so gender is changeable this is the first thing is it is changeable and if we hold on to these stereotypes we will have problems now the next statement is males are male nurses are less it's another big important stereotype female nurses are more caring so you have 85% of today's nursing are females males hold very small a very small proportion and they are totally in the background <clears throat> they don't get important jobs they don't get important exposures but the fact that uh female nurses are considered or perceived to be more caring is because she is a janani that she has produced children therefore she is the only person who can be caring now let us look us look at our physiology the nervous system is the same the cardiac system is the same it's not that men have bigger heart and women have soul of smaller the matter of caring and compassion is a human emotion the divide is between human and inhuman and not men and women there are many families where the wife is no more and the father is bringing up the child is he not caring and at the same time i have witnessed in many of the public health centers where we used to see the uh, female nurses behaving abominably being be abominably abusive with, with poor women who come after repeated pregnancies and scolding them for that now did that woman have a say in when she will get pregnant or whether she will get pregnant or whether she will have access to uh, you know protective sex no but the female nurse would be now therefore you know we cannot blame either of these genders but this stereotyping is what we have to dispense with now in the corona situation very important very significant point to be understood the female nurses are the frontline workers assuming 90% of them are all married and their husbands are working now having to work from home now the, therefore what the, these these are all situations that we are now confronted with because and we, the entire issue of gender stereotyping which leads to bias is getting challenged in today's days and it is actually being now being followed okay everybody is accepting yes the women has to women have to go out i have to sit at home and work i have to look after and many of them are involved in sweeping in cooking something which they never ever thought is their right or is their is their uh, not their right is their duty there's nothing i mean the, uh, the being for, born a uh, uterus has no connection with uh, cooking or making tea or whatever right this has got no connection but these are gender stereotyped connections that we bring into the public space now girls and women another statement girls and women can be out uh, at na- out at night at their own risk and have their responsibility for the consequences now this is a very drastic statement in the case of nirbhaya or in the case of the hyderabad techie the first question that came up was why were these girls out at night they should not have been out at night no day is hours but night these hours means both men and women can walk around but night is not hours 
you can't divide day and night like that suppose women has uh, many any of us can face this uh, this uh, matter if you have a, a elderly mother a sick mother and you need to go to the hospital would you be prevented from going out at night to go to the doctor or to get the medicines and if this stereotype prevailed now who has the, the skills of driving or the fearlessness of moving out at night will never ever be there the freedom of movement therefore was one of the very important points that freedom of mobil the freedom of mobility was a very important point right from the beginning that the, there must be freedom to move at move at any point for your work and feel fearless about it so this is another statement of gender girls invite rape eat teasing or sexual harassment at workplace because of their behavior and their clothes they wear this is another very typical statement that we have now if 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 uh, if somebody is not uh, properly dressed yes the option is not to see or look the other way or to blind yourself the option is not raping so these are some of the typical mindsets that we have now unless rape is resisted girls consent to sexual relations is presumed i am not saying this this is a these are any number of judgments in the court the judiciary if she has not resisted that means she has consented the presumption is that she has consented and many judgments now what will happen there won't be any conviction she would have been raped and still there will not be any conviction a missing minor adolescent girl is presumed to have eloped with a male friend and police do not register fir for missing persons very common this is a typical mindset that she has run away with somebody and believe me the kind of work that we have done on human trafficking all these missing children or at least most of these missing children have been found way bomb very far ahead in time in these brothels in the brothels we have rescued them and in some of the cases it was too late because they had grown so old in the job and they didn't want to come out but they were all originally started as missing missing girls missing adolescent girls this is another mindset this is a typical mindset that uh, that the police police have and therefore they don't register these these cases now women and mothers in law more than men sustain and perpetuate patriarchy this is very typical you know uh, to say that it is uh, women hold these values and not not so much the men and i, I have seen that you know, the question here is what gives women a dominant status in the family the fact is by virtue of having a son she has become a son in mother in law not otherwise right now if there is son preference you want don't want girls but you want only boys if there is son preference naturally the fact that she has produced sons gives she gets the respect at home because she has produced sons and therefore she becomes part of the per patriarchal setup that is the mindset that is is, is uh, that she grows with because she gets acceptance she gets recognition and therefore this is the value she internalizes therefore when we say this we'll have to be make a very careful parak of the statement distinguish the statement as to why it is being said so now more women go in for sterilization than men we have seen you everybody knows about it that there is it's 80 to 85% it's tubec to me and not basic to me whereas basic to me is cheaper and you know it's much time and it's not terminal whereas tubec to me is terminal now women choose tubec to me because she is a person who gets repeatedly pregnant and therefore she doesn't want and she prefer a terminal method than any other method this is part of self image also now women tend to justify violence by spouse i am not saying this this is the nfhs 3 the third uh, report which has come one said it two said it three said it and it's rated anywhere between 65 to 70% around the country women neglect their own health needs is again a statement of gender with reference to self image neglecting or non prioritization of your own needs police arrest women more women than male clients on grounds of soliciting under itpa now when the when uh, women are into uh, found or 
found in prostitution. We will never use the word prostitutes. They are found in prostitution. They are there never ever by their own choice. They are by force of circumstances, deceit, fraud, monetary considerations, sale. They are there, right? But having been put into that job, into that place, with very, very, the very, very difficult and adverse uh, situations, they are forced, they are coerced. Now she has no way to go out. Now this is what people uh, pr prefer to call as the supply side of trafficking. And, but the point is, it is demand which keeps trafficking grow to such magnitudes. And the, the, the women are the most visible. When you go for a raid or a rescue operation, we don't call any more raids, we go, go for rescue operations. The women are the first, most visible, they get caught. Never ever are the primps, the procurers, the traffickers, the customers, the clients, never ever are they arrested. If we, if we do that, then you know you have actually uh, made a dent on the problem of human trafficking. It's more fruitful to invest in boys' education than girls' education. We know that because of the son, the son preference and yes, okay, property will go to the son. They will take care of me in the old age. These are some of them. Men are not to be seen crying. So this has tremendous harmful impact on men. This is well documented in research literature, especially in health research. Women are underrepresented in science, technology, engineering, mathematics called STEM careers. So this is another, another area where, you know, right from the beginning, we make them feel that we, girls are not good enough for these science subjects. Policing needs more physical strength and hence more men are required in police. Now, this is, this is a physical strength. So women are not fit for combat duties, for raids, for uh, naxal operations, for any combating form of operations which is completely untrue. And I, you, you are probably familiar with the re, very recent judgments where the Supreme Court has said that they can be put in combative duties, right? So <clears throat> now the, the entire police force has about 9 to 10% women. 75% of these women are in the constabulary level. About 2% 1.5 to 2% are in the rank of IG and above, right? Now, you can imagine what, what kind of a situation we will have if the kind of patriarchal mindsets that we saw in the research on higher education was prevailing in greater intensity in the police force. It is. It is prevails in greater intensity in the police force. Therefore, the need for women is very important. The crime against, crimes against women, if you have a patriarchal mindset, how would you do a crime against, uh, de investigate crimes in, against women from a gender justice point of view? Never, it's not going to happen. And we have seen any number of cases, now it's come a lot into the media, but we know any number of cases, even there's judgments where convictions did not happen. Now, with uh, Nirbhaya's case is a case where everybody garnered their strength to fight for this girl and then uh, finally even though the world was against uh, uh, you know death punishment capital punishment capital punishment was given now boy tends to involve uh, in high risk behaviors now this is part of their upbringing part of the socialization we saw on in the one of the slides where girls are uh, you know where boys have much more freedom of movement they can move at night they can talk, they can meet their friends late at night. In fact, they actually do. And you have no way of telling them, calling them back. And therefore, this, the, the research literature is abounds in cases of high-risk behavior, going into brothels for experimentation. It's documented. Going into alcohol, going into drugs, going into smoking. Now, they tend to involve in high risk behaviors. Now, Indian students go to America and do cooking on their own. And I, before that, I'll read the next day, the chefs in big hotels and restaurants are men. Now, although gender division of labor said that 
women uh, are, are involved in child rearing and bearing and maintenance of households and therefore cooking and washing etc becomes part of their domestic uh, duties but the moment it is a question of commercial uh, involvement where there is a matter of money say money and uh, uh, handsome salaries you know, I, I always wondered why it was called handsome salary now i can understand handsome salaries then it's always the chefs who are getting more salary for the same kind of work that a woman is doing at home uh, we, we, you know she's she's so skilled and if you let her she will do but then most of the chef jobs are occupied by men and if he comes home is the wife who still does the cooking he won't be doing the cooking at home let's remember that now these uh, many of these indian students we for when they go, go iit students they go away i they never did any work at home they were never encouraged they were never promoted i think may be changing but suppose those are the families where they had no work to do like you know cooking work and they go abroad they cook for themselves and for their girlfriends also when they come back they promptly forget that they know how to do cooking so these are all changeable variable behaviors that is very important that a situation might make you do cooking a situation but the way the work way of work uh, away uh, away from home uh, scenario is happening when are starting to even cook when are starting to do many other things which they assigned to women allocated to women now women neglect their own health i think is a repetition women sarpanches are elected but are backed up by pati pati sarpanches now they are the elected members but who rules it's the men now the point is you have projected her into that battlefield of panchayat elections with ill equipped probably ill equipped but she grows in the job most of them i have seen a grow in their job they are also given uh, even in the in the panchayat they are giving uh, women and child nutrition uh, the engineering side the road construction building construction are all with male uh, males this is typical i mean this is one of the one most common stereotype that we have seen in in the panchayats now the point is many of these women having if they have fought they have either been killed as witches they have any number of do, uh, documentations of this they have been killed or their reputation has been put at stake so it's a it's a it's a great battlefield because it's a stereotype because of this stereotype and therefore in uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, criticism of women uh, sarpanches they, they don't deliver they come with the burka they come with the parda and they don't know what's happening they're only smiling and all the men are merely doing away the meetings now this is another typical stereotype the girls are not safe at home and in schools i want to explain this if we, if we all know about it birthday gifts to girls is barbies and toy toys is for boys now in some ways we are reinforcing these stereotypes we never think about it this is come with socialization this is come with internalization that you know girls play with barbies now we have to stop because of the you know us is facing this gun culture this boys are getting you trigger happy having been given guns and having been exposed to guns and having been habituated to accept guns on their birthdays now the last one and the most important is girls do not have even the fundamental right to be born now girls are not even allowed to be conceived if they are conceived they are killed uh 0 to 6 0 to 6 age group we have what you call adverse female male sex ratios now at conception level this is part of science we all know it at conception time more boys are conceived it's 110 boys to 105 girls or roughly at that number but wastage of male fetuses is higher than female fetuses female fetuses being the race begetting gender is biologically supreme by way by because of the x chromosomes now despite so girls are killed not because they are sick or disabled or any other they are they are killed be, only because they are girls and they are hale and healthy when they are killed the same happens in the case of when it's female uh, infanticide 
Now, are we a patriarchal society or not? After having uh, listened to this much, first is the divisions between sex and gender. Then we looked at uh, the high school, uh, higher second, high, uh, higher uh, education institutions, the male and female mindsets, the gender stereotype. Fundamentally, only if you have a right to be born, you can enjoy any other right. If you don't even have the right to be born, and that is because you have son preference, you do not want females, then there is something fundamentally wrong. And this is the determining feature of patriarchy. Now, a bit at what... Now, people may say, no, it's, uh, it has improved, child sex ratio has improved. Look at that, it's coming down. It's 9.45 to 9. It may be improving in certain areas and those are not to be relied upon unless we go through the census, which is 100% counting. Uh, many reports are coming about certain areas that, you know, within five years, over a period of time, the sex ratio has gone up. Maybe it's a very micro level studies, may be true, but that cannot be extrapolated or made applicable to the whole of the state or whole of the country. The fact is that it is declining. And what have we lost in these, uh, in these 40, 50 years? Look at the purple. Uh, 960, it was 960, 1961. We have come down to 19, 919, 914 or thereabouts. Now, all, for every thousand, we have lost 40 in the first year, 36 in the second year, 38. In the, now, if you go on like this, we have finished millions of female girls. Finished. Finished. Now, the other red uh, is actually overall sex ratio. That, is, uh, uh, that applies to females in general, every age. And that is not a gender important gender indicator. The gender determinant, the gender a disempowerment indicator is the child sex ratio in the age group of 0 to 6. Now, having said this, let's look at let's look at what has happened between, I think it's 2001, 2000, the two censuses, 2001 and 2011. Look at the way it has spread. Look at the way it spread. A very, I mean, if you're talking strictly about Madhya Pradesh, where we are now uh, doing this Samvad, uh, look at that, Madhya Pradesh, the whole of Madhya Pradesh is actually covered by, by this. Now, so it is, this is what is happening in 2000, the next census is going to be, uh, where work has already started and I'm already part of the gender sensitization ex exercise for the census of 2021. Uh, we'll have to wait and see as to what's going to happen. Now, now this, now, what is the framework here of gender? We are talking about stereotype has led to bias. Bias has led to inequality and inequality to human rights violations. Now, all rights violations are rooted in gender stereotyping. That's the foundation. That's where it all happens. Unless we root out stereotyping and look at life as something Available to both men and women by way of opportunities, rights, choices, and looking at every human being to develop or his own or her own potential to live up its, to its full growth. These sort of situations will prevail. Now, some of these crimes are female marriages of minor girls, all are rooted in stereotyping. The point that I'm trying to make is this. Sexual abuse, trafficking, rape, trafficking. If you, if you think the girl child is a, disp is a dispensable commodity, then she, she becomes a nobody. And if she's a nobody, it's only her body which is valued and that's how she gets exploited in such situations. Sexual abuse, we are all aware that it happens mostly in Families with, within no, with, with known persons, not uh, mostly families, but otherwise people with known persons, acquaintances. Now, all these laws, if we say, no, no, our, our society is not patriarchal, it is matriarchal. Or if we say there is no gender equality, look at the preponderance of laws which provide protection to women and girls. These are women 
and girl child specific legislations all these actions which are now enforceable as violation of human rights started out originally as violence within the home and therefore not within the purview of law now these are all social legislations which has unearthed all those violations in the domain domestic violence it so took so long to bring the law of domestic violence because they said violence is a matter of a home we should not interfere in the on the home front but then the situation took a good turn and then we have the domestic violence act now sexual harassment now this is another area which i'm very happy that the committee on sexual harassment of women at workplace is part of this part of this organizing this uh, this uh, very crucial workshop for a whole month and i believe that this immersion is going to be of great value to you and to the society that or the community where you work wherever you will work now who suffers and who gains is a question that we must ask having read the your the statements of the pg students who are participants in the research or when we have gone through those very uh, important uh, statements of sexism uh, gender uh, uh, gender insensitivity now we have to see who suffers who gains is there somebody who gains or is it all suffering now women and girls suffer otherwise there's no gain saying that because you won't be having so many laws if you did not women were not to suffer family suffers family suffers in every way family suffers i, I don't know there it's a very it may be a little uh, new little funny example but you know when uh, marriages take place now if your daughter is getting married and your son is getting married okay let's assume it's happening in 19 one, one marriage took place in 90 2019 another marriage took place before corona in 2020 and that was time when the bash was on the wedding parties were on otherwise corona is all blocked now if you look at that situation the parents of the girls the parents of the girl the bride right daughter the way they behave in a wedding and the moment in 2020 they become the parents of the groom they are the pair they are the parents group who are who are coming into the wedding there is it's a completely different body language the shoulder stoops now why do we have to get into a situation whether it's a girl or a boy it's a happy occasion whether it's a girl or a boy why should gender stereotype and gender bias have a have to play this role the family does suffer the community does suffer if you are going to have uh, uh, this uh, the female male sex ratio as i said there are many places in the country particularly in rajasthan where there are no females to get married to and therefore this has resulted in a great deal of human trafficking can you believe this that women are being trafficked from um, uh, orissa from bihar from assam to say haryana and rajasthan and they are literally kept as sex slaves and they do every bit of the work every bit of the work in the homes of these uh, patriarchs so called patriarchs now the community suffers without girls there are many 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 cases and there are other examples i am just quoting a very blaring example a glaring example now men men suffer and this is probably not uh, you know Uh, documented too much in uh, it's, it, it doesn't come forth. This is uh, this is a topic which is uh, sort of not too much discussed. Now, the suicide rates. I mean, the fact that the, everything starts out of the basic stereotype. For a woman, it is janani. Everything starts from that, and for a man, it is the provider's role, the breadwinner's role. Now, if he is into great stress because he is having to work and Uh, if there are stresses at workplace, and if we have also concluded from those statements that there is high risk behavior amongst boys and men, the the uh, the literature, the research literature, definitely concludes that there is high rate of suicide because of work related stress in the age group of 
30 to 49. They, uh, it is also recorded that men go less, that the health-seeking behavior of men is not up to the mark, that they do not speak out, that they, do not, they don't have the space to confide. And after all, when there are so many female nurses and very few male nurses, there is a situation which, is, which can create a conflict or a dilemma. Now, let's take another example. Now, if a man, because of, the, uh, if, uh, because of stereotype, wants to become a gynecologist or a female nurse, if he wants to become a gynecologist, it's really, really hard for him to set up a practice because the, there is the stereotype is women are, uh, women are better gyne gynecologists than men, whereas the practice could be to the contrary. Or practice could be that both could do their jobs well because they are dealing with bodies. Right? Now, this is, uh, this is, these are some of the limitations of choice that get imposed on men the moment you have stereotypes. So, men, women suffer equally. Equally. Uh, I won't say equally, right? Women and girls suffer more, but then men also suffer. So, if you are going to be part of maintaining this stereotype leading to biases, believe me, in killing, you'll get killed. In harming, you'll get harmed. I remember a, a very uh, an Air Force officer who was a very, very senior officer. And uh, he came to us saying that his uh, daughter is uh, being harassed because of dowry. Now, he, as a male, he never felt ever in his life to feel that his daughter could suffer. And he's from the upper class, right? He's, he's, uh, he's very, very rich an affordable family. So that's why I said in the beginning that you may feel that in your house you are maintaining equality but the moment you get out into the world in the public domain that uh, what do you call that luxury of equality is not a reality. It may not be available and it may be uh, it may not be available and with harmful consequences to both men and women. Now, the, the kind of trauma that that man... So, if you know, uh, maternal mortality, let us look at maternal mortality. It's one of the highest in the region. Infant mortality, again, one of the highest in the region. I'm talking about Sark region, not the South Asian region. Now, if we are going to lose women because of maternal mortality, whereas this is a time that by, by doing the very act of procreation, she is dying. That procreation in the same breath means a death for her, then this is something that we all have to be. Therefore, when I come to male involvement, I will show you as to how I will try to speak to you or um, um, uh, tell you what is happening in terms of male involvement. Now, the society also suffers. So what we have, when we have the women empowerment or gender empowerment indices looked into, then you will see how the society has suffered in terms of development. Now, that's another big story, but this is what happens because health parameters, education parameters, most of the other parameters, there is a tremendous gap. There is tremendous gender inequality and therefore to reduce the gap is a big task. Now, now, I want to, I, I just want to uh, reinforce or reiterate the fact that nobody gains. If you look introspect into the statement, if gender inequality is considered a given, okay, it's a given, we can't do anything about it, it's given. If that has to be accepted, then does someone gain? Let's look at, you may just look into it. I'm just raising these questions. If gender inequality is considered justified or necessary, then also someone gains. And who is that who is gaining? But if gender inequality is considered harmful, then we all suffer and nobody gains. Nobody gains. Nobody gains. Now, how to break gender stereotypes? This is at the... Uh, it's very important. It's a chicken or egg story. Now, is it at the personal level that we can break stereotypes and uh, create scope for gender inequality? Or is it is it something that is to be done 
at the level of government institutions policies etc etc it's a chicken and egg story you can have you can have any amount of cases of cases where the uh, people who committed the crime have been uh, convicted like the nirbhaya case but then rape keeps happening rape keeps happening you can have all your sops you can have all your judgments you can have all your precedences you can have uh, police uh, sensitization rape will continue so important this is a chicken and egg story therefore personal level the change that we become role models in our life look at the situation that if uh, pre corona if the husband was going to work and the woman was doing all the uh, domestic duties the children are actually learning from that it's a free netflix show that they are seeing and that has gained takes strong roots even in early childhood this kind of gender divide but in post corona or during corona i'm not saying post corona it's too early to say that premature to say that in during corona if you have been having ha pardon sorry for interrupting ma'am actually i'm um, looking at ki ma'am thoda sa samay ki maryada hai to please okay, conclude okay i'm going to see the i'm going to show the next one okay ma'am please okay. conclude within 3 minutes so i'll finish it quickly okay, ma'am yes ma'am a little bit we started late तो ये तो देख लीजिए तुम भी किसी गुरु से कम नहीं हो जितने पाठ तुमने पढ़ाए उतने सौ सालों में किसी ने नहीं पढ़ाए तो दिस इज वन सो आई एम दिस इज हाउ द सेंसेस ऑफ 2011 वाज 2001 एंड 2011 2001 एंड 2011 इट सेड ओके फीमेल वर्क फीमेल हेडेड हाउस होल्ड्स आर नॉट विजिबल फीमेल वर्क फोर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इज नॉट विजिबल and it, and because they are all into domestic uh, work and therefore it is invisibilized and therefore the census took up a very special initiative of capturing all the pictures of work that women and men do and then if they are even if they were illiterate women the picture was shown and they would pick into two or three columns like for example if you take jammu and kashmir saffron growing apple growing so if with these pictures with this the workforce part is female workforce participation because around the world the, the the view was that women do being in the private domain their work do not contribute to national income therefore it was important to visibilize the fact that women force uh, their work force part and similarly female headed household because of migration or because of death or non earning member the females were heading the households this again was a very important contribution of the of the of the census of 2001 that was called the gender responsive census which is being continued now mahila samriddhi yojana again very quickly it was a it was a um, sort of a, a case where all women could open their it was in the 1995 and i'm say i'm trying to project both parts one is that government sincerely started this scheme with a view to give economic empowerment right and that had certain fall off positive impacts in terms of the quality of their lives but they said okay you can ask uh, open a post office uh, savings account and then you can deposit money at any time you want but you know after and the, the the this this was a phenomenal phenomenal successful story but then within 2 3 years the the the, the, the very scheme was closed and undocumented reason was it just hit the hit patriarchal values below its belt so this is another example the male involvement part <clears throat> i have already mentioned so how can the gaps been reduced at the personal level at the society's level and i remember in male involvement i'll just give a small example when i was a collector in munger and my husband was my husband was the sp of the district we didn't want to be in the district together because we are two small children and we didn't know how to handle the the law and order in the district was managed but at home it was a problem so when the cm visited the district we told him that why don't you put one of us out of the district this uh, so that you know uh, we could be or any other any other uh, posting in the district so he said gdm or sp jo hai husband wife jaisa kaam karna chahiye main sab jagah bolta hu banti ji aur nayar ji jaisa aap log sp dm kaam kariye तो मैं ये कहता हूँ नायर जी आप आधा दिन बच्चे लोगों को देखभाल करिए आधा दिन बामती जी बच्चे लोगों को देखभाल करेगी दिस केम फ्रॉम चीफ मिनिस्टर कॉल मिस्टर बिंदे श्री दुबे 
union leader at that point in time. Uh, now, increase in male involvement uh, is when uh, women and men go to the... Now, we have couple counselling. Earlier, it was only it was a thing thought to be a woman's job to go to the doctor, to go to the nurse or whatever. Now, we have antenatal, antenatal care, postnatal care, where both the men and... Therefore, this is enhanced reproductive health outcomes. Now, gender gaps can be reduced by school educational curriculum to remove stereotypical or patriarchal roles. The role of media is very important. We all, we all know about it. Barring uh, shows like Udan and others, all of them are reinforcing the stereotypical roles. We do enter gender mainstreaming that any scheme has to have a proportion of male involvement. We can't do women alone schemes. That is not empowerment. We remove glass ceiling that, uh, you know, people, women, they can go to any, any, uh, any rise to any level in terms of what they do in the job. Now, I've tried to describe, I'm not going to redo these two slides because uh, how gender gaps can be reduced in police and criminal justice system, you can take a look at it and you can extrapolate some of these recommendations, some of these suggestions, some which have worked, some which have not worked, but they are good in their own way, in their own respect. You can try and do it for other sectors. I'll just complete this with this slide of this lady called Padma Bai, a Sarpanch who was uh, of a tribal village of more than 2,000 farmers. Now, look at that. She came from a home where she had probably no access to the public world. But when she moved, the moment she became a Sarpanch, she removed all stereotype. She got into industry. She got into enterprise. She got into commerce. She got into lending. And she got into innovative ways of working, water pump and uh, rainwater harvesting. And this, to top it all, is Navroti of Rajasthan, was born in an underprivileged family. She did not attend school, but she mobilized 700 laborers to get payment of minimum wages. That was the movement that she did in Tilonia district. And now... Other than basic, uh, uh, basic uh, developing basic infrastructure of the village, the cyber savvy septuagenarian Sarpanch has trained a large number of village women in the use of computers. Now, this is what is called Atma Shakti. Sashakti is given. Atma Shakti is taken. Unless we demand and work and fight for it, this kind of survival with quality life is not going to be possible. The change has to be each one of us. We want to see the change, as Gandhiji said, be the change agent yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your informative and insightful presentation on gender bias and stereotypes. Thank you very much. Now, I am Professor D.K. Verma Sarko, Chairperson, IQSC, and Dean Browse. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Dr. Rekhman. I'm really very thankful to Bhamti Madam for delivering a very academically enriching discourse on gender bias and stereotypes. Madam, you have actually explained the mindset through the patriarchy that is still existing though we call it vestigial in terms of our constitutional ideals, as we have been uh, given equality. But all those provisions are in the book of constitution, not in the society. And uh, you have rightly pointed out uh, the gender role in terms of social, uh, social reproduction. Whatever the differences we see, they are related to the sexual reproduction. And uh, the feminist movement definitely worked towards that. Briefly, I would like to uh, point out uh, uh, the theoretical understanding that need to be promoted, encouraged. And I take help of uh, Simone Lucy, Ernestine Mary Breton Beauvoir. She wrote her book in French in 1949. The second sex. Whatever you are telling about uh, the gender bias listed types, that is very well reflected when that book was translated by one American uh, geologist 
Howard Madison Parshley, and he missed all the philosophical nuances, the gender neutrality in that, and so the book uh, was banned by uh, the religion. But he can place the book in the list of prohibited uh, books. But that is really the contribution which we must understand. What we want to say about the gender. The book is in two volumes, and the first one is facts and myths, and the second one is lived experiences. The basic question she started: What is a woman? And when she comes to that definition, then opposite side is taken: humanity is man, and woman is the other. And when we say we and them, I and other. everything starts and she was courageous enough to stand against sigmund freud alfred adler fredrik angels who were promoting this patriarchy i am very thankful to uh, bamati madam because she valiantly opposed the existence of patriarchy in mary research studies we find it but as you see the power structure it is not existing even in matrical societies i have studied in kasi in meghalaya they are the matri lineal societies rather because the decisions are taken by the maternal uncle of the child so we need to be very particular when we do research and within this uh, 2012 to 2020 we are witnessing fourth fifth and sixth waves of feminism and we starting from the liberation to individualism to identity equality and to uh, currently movement mass movement against, against sexual abuse we are entering into dignity with equity that is the call of the seventh wave i would say for a feminism the gender word as coined by john money in 1955 is getting its true meaning understanding in the recent uh, years when we talk about very steps of gender as in facebook we when we go we have to give our identity and there are more than 171 options for our gender identity so the, the, it's not the case of man or woman only now it is not the case of man woman or transgender but it is crossing to as many as 171 gender identities and that is the role that is the role that is the society we have to see and sociologically speaking if you really work in the social science theoretical understanding the patriarchal societies matrical societies our belief and faith institutions around the social organization they have nothing to do with the power structures but somehow this kind of misunderstanding that has crept in the society and that has developed a kind of mindset and stereotyping behavior right from the Uh, uh, child uh, uh, girlhood she is taught how to be a mother and that makes the difference i think uh, uh, dr bamati has very eloquently and very elaborately explained what are the gender biases and what are the stereotypes i really thank you madam for delivering such a wonderful talk and really it will help the research scholars and our academic affinity and faculty to do research on this uh, gender biases how to remove them eliminate them annihilate them and they should have behavior definitely it will take time but there must be institutions now there must be some belief systems now replacing and as you rightly concluded the pandemic the present covid 19 pandemic is giving us the opportunity to move in the direction of gender equity thank you very much for delivering such a wonderful talk thank you doctor in fact uh, the last slide which i could not uh, complete i have for academic interest i was mindful of the fact that i am talking to university uh, inmates uh, so i have uh, talked about some of the theories which is one is on biology and gender the yeah. kolberg's cognitive theory yeah the social cognitive